The next section that we're going to be going over is the composition of functions. So let's learn what the definition is. The composition of functions, and the official way that this is denoted is by this little circle here in the middle, but it's pronounced f of g, is defined of just like it sounds when we take our f function and we substitute in our g function. So a lot of times we say f of x or f of 7, but here we're taking one function and we're substituting it in for the other function. So we are composing functions or a function within a function. So one more time, f of g of x is when we take our g of x function and we substitute it in for our f of x function. Okay, now before we get into a new example of this using some of this new notation, let's go back and I want to show you that you actually are already doing this. So we defined f of x in this example to be 3x squared minus 4. If we want to find f of 2 plus z, then what we do is we take this 2 plus z and we plug it in for every place that we see an x. So basically, you are composing functions here. You just didn't know that you were doing it, and we just weren't using the official notation. Okay, so let's do this to simplify, to freshen ourselves up. We do a 2 plus z, and again for x, in this case, 3 times it when it's squared, minus 4. So all I have to do is simplify this here using algebra. Remember, you cannot distribute that square. You must actually FOIL this out. So 2 times 2 gives me 4. Outside gives me a 2z. Inside gives me a 2z. So when I add those together, that gives me a 4z. z times z gives me a z squared. And when I distribute that 3 through, that gives me 12 minus 12z plus 3z squared. And then copy down my constant term of 4. So to simplify this, I'm just going to write it in descending order and combine like terms. So I have 3z squared minus 12z, and then my 12 minus my 4 gives me my 8. So that gives me f of 2 plus z. So here is an example of composing functions. Okay, now let's see how it looks when they use that new fancy notation that they just introduced in the last slide. So here, they specifically give us our f of function is x squared plus 2x, and our g function of x minus 4, and we want to figure out what f of g of 6 is. Or another way this could have been written was f of g of 6. Now, we can do this one of two ways, just like we did back in the algebra section. I can plug my 6 in first, since they did give us that number, and then compose our two functions. Or we can compose our two functions first and then substitute in our 6. Since they gave us the number, I'm going to plug that 6 into my functions first. In the next slide, let me show you the examples here. They don't give us what our number is. So our job is just to compose the two functions. And that's the route I'm going to take in that example. So let's step back a notch. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to follow our PEMDAS rules. Parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, and addition, subtraction. So I see multiple sets of parentheses here. So I want to work with my innermost parentheses first. So the very first thing that I want to do in this problem is I want to figure out what g of 6 is. So I just take my g function and I substitute in 6. Pretty easy here. 6 minus 4 gives me 2. So that tells me g of 6 is defined to be 2. Well, that means that I can make that substitution in for here. So instead of writing g of 6, I'm going to write 2. So then I need to figure out what f of 2 is. Well, I have my f of x function, so I just need to substitute in my x or my 2 value and for all of the x's there. 
So that gives me 2 squared plus 2 times substituting in 2, or 4 plus 4, or 8. So that tells me, since I've worked through all the steps of this problem, that is defined to be f of g of 6. I found g of 6 first, and then I found f of that number there. Okay, I suggest that you pause the video and see if you can do part b on your own. Just start with the innermost parentheses. Figure out what f of 0 is, and then figure out what g of that is from there. So first step, figuring out what f of 0 is, I substitute 0 in from my function, which gives me just 0. So this now means g of, instead of f of 0, I'm substituting in the answer that I got out with 0. So I just substitute 0 in for my g function, which is 0 minus 4, or it simplifies to be negative 4. So g of f of 0 simplifies to be negative 4. So we're substituting one function in for the next. Hence, you're composing functions. Okay, let us do a second example then. So I have my f of x defined to be 1 over x minus 2, and I have my g of x to be defined 2x minus so my first step is I want to find f of g of x, or again, this could be as written as f of g of x, meaning I want to take my g of x function, that's my inside function, and I want to substitute it in for my f of x function. So I do exactly what I just said. I take my g of x function, because that's my innermost function, and I substitute it in for all of the x's in my f of x function. So f of g of x is 1 over, instead of my x value here, I substitute in this box over here, 2x minus 6. So that's what I substitute in for the x. And then I have the minus 2 from my f of x. Now, of course, I simplify this. So let me drop the parentheses, 2x Minus 6 minus 2 gives me minus 8. I cannot simplify this function anymore, so this is defined to be f of g of x. Or if you want to use the other notation, f of g of x. So you just take your g of x function and you substitute it in for all of the x's in your f of x function. Now the second thing that this problem asks for is the domain. So we have to review our cautions. We cannot divide by zero. We cannot take square roots of a negative number. We have to worry about word application and anything else. So in this example, I see that we have a denominator. I know that my denominator cannot be zero. So I just need to solve this equation like it was in fact equal to zero. Move my eight to the other side, divide by two. So that gives me x is equal to four which really means I can have any number besides x equal to 4. So my domain in interval notation is any number up to 4 but not including it, union 4 and beyond, again, not including 4. Or if I wanted to do my domain in set builder notation, it's the set of x's such that x is not equal to 4. Okay. So I found f of g of x. In part b, we want to do the opposite. We want to find g of f of x. Or, again, the way it can be denoted is g of f of x. So you're going to take your f of x function, your yellow function, and you're going to substitute it in for any place you see an x in your blue function. So you're going to substitute it in for this guy right here. I suggest that you pause the video and see if you can work that on your own and find the domain of it when you're finished simplifying it as well. Okay, so I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to substitute it in for my x's. So this gives me 2 times 1 over x minus 2, 
minus 6. So that is g of f of x, meaning I substitute my f function, my yellow function, into my blue function. To simplify this, I need to review how to multiply fractions. Let me make 2 into a fraction by putting it over 1. And then I multiply fractions by multiplying straight across. So I have 2 over x minus 6 x minus 2 minus 6. Now, if we find it absolutely necessary, we can actually combine these two fractions here, or my fraction and my whole number. If it's not a necessity, we can possibly leave it like this as our answer. It asks us to just compose the function. Now, I'm going to go ahead and simplify it just to review again more of our fraction techniques, but in some versions, it might be okay to, to leave your answer like this. So I'm going to put my 6 over 1, and then to subtract fractions, I need an LCD. My LCD, or my least common denominator between x minus 2 and 1, is x minus 2. So I need to multiply both my numerator and my denominator of my second fraction by x minus 2. That gives me 2 over x minus 2. I am going to put this negative with the 6, so I'm going to make this an addition problem and distribute my negative 6, which gives me a, a negative 6x plus 12 over x minus 2. So combining like terms, I get a negative 6x, 2 plus 12 gives me a 14 over x minus 2. So now I have combined them to be one fraction. Now the domain, again I worry about the same cautions as always. Cannot divide by zero, cannot take square root of a negative number, what does this mean in a word problem, and so on and so forth. Here I know that my denominator cannot be zero, so that means my x cannot be equal to two. So in interval notation, my domain is defined as negative infinity up to two, as well as beyond two but not including it. Or in set builder notation, x such that x is not equal to 2 in itself. Okay, so I've given you a few different examples of how to compose functions. Now, in math, we always work it one way and then come back and work it the opposite way. So that's what we're going to be doing in the next video.